Are you ready to uncover the enigmatic secrets concealed behind the hidden doors of NASA's Forbidden Realm as we delve into the captivating world of NASA's secret off-limits room? This is Explorium, and welcome to our channel. Today we will peek into the recesses of NASA's extraordinary bunker. So without further ado, let's begin. In the heart-pounding moments leading up to the historic launch of Apollo 11, a daring NASA engineer was thrust into a mission of utmost importance. He aimed to confront a threatening hydrogen leak that risked sabotaging the entire endeavor. This nerve-wracking task awaited him a staggering 60 meters above the ground, mere steps away from the Saturn V rocket, partially fueled and ready to ignite. The colossal Saturn V, harboring over 2,500 tons of volatile fuel, possessed the destructive potential of an atomic bomb. A detonation at that moment would kill everyone on the launch pad, bringing swift death to all who stood in its devastating path. However, a disastrous fuel leak, though dangerous, could present a window for response and escape. Deep beneath the launch pad, nestled 12 meters below the surface, lay an extraordinary place known as the Rubber Room. A relic from the 1960s, this underground fortress had been purposefully engineered to safeguard astronauts and personnel in the face of imminent disaster. Imagine the explosive outcome of the Saturn V becoming an infernal fireball engulfing everything within half a kilometer in width, spewing forth an intense blaze reaching over a thousand degrees in temperature. In the face of such a looming catastrophe, the brave workers stationed at the pad required a swift path to the bunker, a race against time. Yet buried deep beneath the unyielding concrete of the pad, the question is how they even reached the sanctuary. The daring crew embarked on a risky journey venturing into the confines of the mobile launch platform's interior, a massive two-story structure supporting the towering Saturn V. Once positioned at the pad, a small hatch within the platform would connect to a protruding structure extending from the launch pad itself. A 60-meter long slide concealed within the platform descended through the concrete of the launch pad, leading directly to the bunker. At the peak of the slide, a sprinkler showered the crew with water, lubricating their descent down the chute, facilitating their rapid arrival to the bunker. In a matter of heart-stopping seconds, they slipped downward, accelerating to unfathomable speeds as they plummeted into the depths of the launch pad's underbelly. Following a steep descent, they crashed into the fabled rubber room. This chamber boasted walls lined with immense layers of rubber some measuring a formidable 60 centimeters in thickness, ingeniously designed to absorb the explosive energy unleashed by a potential blast. However, the rubber at the slide's terminus did not always fulfill its duty of slowing the crew's descent. During testing, the water accumulation at the slide's end propelled the crew at breakneck velocity rather than decelerating, resulting in a horrifying crash. One worker, tragically, suffered multiple fractures throughout their body, a testament to the relentless dangers lurking within the treacherous chute. Upon arrival, the crew would forge ahead, traversing an enormous blast-proof door that granted access to the true heart of the bunker. So before you know more about the bunker, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Emerging from the slide, the crew would find themselves within the resilient confines of the rubber room. Progressing through a narrow passageway, they would enter the blast room featuring 20 strategically positioned chairs securely harnessing the crew members. Fashioned from an amalgamation of ultra-thick steel and concrete, the dome stood waterproof, capable of withstanding the punishing force of a 500 psi blast pressure. To illustrate the staggering magnitude of this grit, consider the blast pressure exceeding approximately 40 psi turns dangerous for human life. Ingeniously, the entire floor of the blast room floated atop a series of 24 mammoth springs, effectively isolating the room from the encircling concrete. This masterful mechanism minimized the transmission of potential deadly vibrations through the structure. An explosion of colossal magnitude could subject the crew to an acceleration equivalent to an astounding 75 Gs, nearly twice the impact experienced in a car crash. Yet with these ingenious springs, the crew's exposure would be reduced to a mere 4 Gs, rendering them perfectly secure within the depths of the blast room. However, the relentless shockwave unleashed by such a cataclysmic explosion could travel instantaneously down the slide, ensuring the crew's demise within moments. Colossal blast-proof doors emerged as the key to their salvation in this dire scenario. It comprises several inches of unyielding steel, 
these doors would seal the crew within the blast room, protecting against the relentless onslaught of shockwaves. These monumental doors, operable from either side, required the turning of a wheel, triggering the engagement of eight colossal pins, firmly anchoring them to the wall. Once locked inside, the crew would remain steadfast in their seats, awaiting the cessation of danger. However, the sealed environment harbored a problematic challenge. As time passed, carbon dioxide levels would rapidly escalate, suffocating the crew and rendering the air nearly unbreathable. A remarkable contraption known as the carbon dioxide scrubber took center stage in response to this menacing threat. This machine expertly filtered the ambient air, deftly extracting CO2 molecules and purifying the atmosphere. By recirculating clean air, the scrubber ensured that the CO2 levels remained within a tolerable limit. Furthermore, a reserve of oxygen candles stood ready to supplement the dwindling oxygen supply. These remarkable candles ignited with iron powder and sodium chloride generated oxygen through an exothermic reaction, producing a precious lifeline within the oxygen-deprived enclosure. Each kilogram of the mixture housed within the candle delivered approximately six hours of vital oxygen per person. Adjacent to these life-sustaining apparatuses, a storeroom contained the essential food and water provisions. The menu predominantly comprised of C rations and K rations, canned sustenance that originated from the crucible of the Second World War. K rations, ingeniously packed with separate boxes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, K rations offered various provisions encompassing meat, cheese, cereal, fruit, biscuits, coffee, and even cigarettes. These provisions delivered a formidable 3,000 calories per day, ensuring the crew's sustenance amidst the tumultuous circumstances. Amidst the resource-laden chamber, an industrial waste bin took center stage, while a discreetly positioned toilet offered a modicum of privacy amidst the arduous trials. The inventory sufficed to support the crew for approximately four to five days. However, in most instances, the crew's stay in the bunker would be brief, lasting maybe only a few hours until the noxious fumes dissipating from the launch pad had abated. But how would they ultimately escape the confines of their new subterranean sanctuary? When the time came for their departure, the crew confronted two primary escape routes. Upon departing the blast room through the alternate blast door, they found themselves within a narrow tunnel stretching 360 meters. This problematic passage would guide them relentlessly to an air intake building on the launch site's fringes. Within this tower resided an immense fan, an air-sucking titan drawing in pure oxygen and channeling it into the underground chambers beneath the launch pad. The courageous crew would finally emerge into freedom after navigating the cramped and suffocating expanse for approximately 10 minutes. However, if the tunnel happened to be obstructed by the overwhelming force of the explosion, the crew would be forced to retrace their steps and pursue an alternate escape route. A door positioned immediately adjacent to the tunnel entrance, leading directly into the labyrinthine corridors of the environmental control rooms, a maze-like network of passageways concealed beneath the formidable pad, ultimately unveiling a path to the world beyond. Yet, in the wake of a colossal explosion, the launch pad would be subject to catastrophic damage, sparking concerns within NASA that the crew would become entangled within the bunker's confines, trapped indefinitely. Consequently, an emergency escape hatch materialized atop the blast room as an additional safety measure. Though this enigmatic exit did not lead anywhere specific, it presented a beacon of hope. With the unwavering determination, they would tunnel through the unyielding concrete and sand enveloping the launch pad, liberating the imprisoned crew through this fateful hatch. Fortunately, such an audacious endeavor was never called upon to unfold. In the aftermath of the Apollo missions, the bunker was abandoned, a testament to an era of remarkable human achievement frozen in time. The passage of years cast the once imposing fortress into disrepair, allowing various wild creatures to claim it as their own. Today, only a few possess the privilege of accessing this venerable relic, destined to remain untouched, a testament to the resilience and audacity that propelled humanity beyond the confines of our world. So what do you think about NASA's secret off-limits room? Isn't it genius to build something like this to prevent casualties? We have two more videos on the screen, especially for you, so please click on them now. Let us know in the comments below if you were also bewildered by NASA's secret bunker. Hopefully you liked the video. If yes, then do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell icon for the latest notifications.